The rich history of Australia's great race may span 27 years, but the most significant change to official qualifying came about in 1978 when the top 10 shootout for pole position was introduced. The Saturday all or nothing dash for cash has certainly produced some memorable moments. Who will ever forget Kevin Bartlett's aquaplaning assault in 81? Or Dick Johnson's trip to the tall timbers two years later? 83 produced the first turbo jackpot for Nissan as George Fury orchestrated the flight of the Bluebird. And of course there was 86 when Tom Walkinshaw and the Coventry Cats were the front row show. In more recent times, the Swift Sierras have set the pace, but today Nissan is back with an awesome new challenger. The four-wheel steer GTR has already carried Jim Richards to victory in the national championship, and pole at Matt Panorama awaits as Seven Sport welcomes you to beautiful Bathurst and the 1990 2 East Top Ten. Yes, good afternoon from Bathurst, and the 2 East Top Ten has been a brilliant week. Brilliant sunshine, some very, very fast times, a tremendous build-up to this great race weekend. And today we're about to find out just who is the fastest driver and which is the fastest car on the mountain. No Nissan in the top ten, but the perennial two Commodores and eight Sierras. And Mike Raymond, you've been coming here as long as the top ten's been going. Yes, yeah, so don't whatever you do ask me to pick who's going to be quickest today. I have no idea. I think it's that wide open. Tony Longhurst, of course, and Alan Jones have set the pace over the last couple of days. But something always happens with the pole shuffle. And the exciting thing about this year is that the times have been just so fast. 2.15.8 dropped last year, which was super quick. They've been well inside that. Well, the other thing that we've got to look at, of course, tomorrow is how quick we'll see the 1,000 kilometres completed. And here's the pole line shootout today. Fastest qualified so far, Tony Longhurst in the B&H era, 2.13.8.4. Alan Jones, an identical time in the sister car. Dick Johnson is third on the road with a 2.14.2.6. Then Glenn Seaton with a 2.14.4.4. Peter Brock then, 0.5 after the rebuild, 2.14.7.2. With sixth on the road, Larry Perkins in the first of the Commodores. Seven, number 10, the Dark Horse Klaus Niedsvitz in the ANZ era. Then, of course, out of position number eight is Greg Hansford in the second of the ANZ cars. Number nine, part of the 40, John Franco Brancatelli. 2.15.3.2 and rounding out the 10, of course, 16, Alan Grice. So we have two Commodores in the top 10 today. Mark, do you think all 10 will go for it today? I think there could be uh, a problem as far as the nine car with Greg Hansford. Alan Moffat has been talking about uh, running that in race mode tomorrow. But I think most of the other guys, Johnson wants pole. It's very important for him. He's been uh, pushed into the into the background over the last two days by Tony Longhurst. It's important for Shell that Johnson's back there. It's also very important for Peter Brock, who was a very strong qualifier here. Okay, so the scene has been set. There's a lot of action going down in the pits at the moment. We're about to go down there and join Richard Hay and John Harvey. We'll bring us right up to date as we're about to gun in the two is top ten. <laughs> 